I guess everybody is ready. Am I audible? If somebody can unmute and let me know whether I'm audible or not, it will be great for me. Yes, sir. Yes, yeah, yes, yeah, okay, okay, now you can mute. Okay, so uh, as you know, your course is your MA662. And this differential equations. Okay, so you must have done it like say many times, multiple times, both in your BSc and MSc days. But the thing is that now you are into your PhD program, so it is going to be a bit different from what you used to learn earlier. Okay, so uh, now uh, what I want to uh, do first that uh, we'll have a look at the syllabus. So for that, I am sharing uh, the announcement file so you can find that in my uh, website also i'll come back to my website a little bit uh, later on but uh, before that let me welcome you all i mean formally and uh, a very good evening and uh, i'm it is so unfortunate that you are having to take classes like this and i would also have preferred you to be a real classroom but as i have told you during your orientation day that I'll try to make uh, your classroom or online classroom life as comfortable as possible, okay? So uh, what I'm going to do, like uh, uh, for the, and let me tell you at the beginning that uh, this is being recorded because I have to, I have got to tell you this because there is some privacy policy. So you are all part of this recording, okay? So basically I have to take your permission to do the recording. And I hope I have got the permission because otherwise, I mean, it will be difficult for you to follow it later on. Because if there is some network problem, then I mean, uh, if you don't see the recording later on, so it may be difficult for you to follow my lectures. Fine. Okay. And uh, so, what I'm going to do, I'm going to have live sessions like this. So, I'm going to do uh, this. This is not actually a blackboard, although it appears black in your computer, maybe. So, it's a green board. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do chalk and talk, uh, I mean, uh, explanations here. And uh, simultaneously, I'm going to run uh, my PowerPoint slides. And you are going to see simultaneously. And uh, it is going to be a combination of both, OK? And uh, then what I'm going to do, and uh, can you tell me whether uh, this, whatever I have written, this is visible perfectly or not? Can somebody unmute and let me know? Yes. Hello, sir. Yeah, it is, it is, it is not coming on full screen. Pardon? It is not coming on the full screen. No, no, that is fine. But but uh, can you see the letters here? OK, yeah, yeah. yeah. We can see. Let me write it down again. Let me try to write down something. Can you see it? Yes, but it is very small. Okay. With to the screen. No, that is why I, I have requested you all to use your laptop and desktop if you possess one. It is not compulsory because it may not be possible for everyone to have a laptop or desktop. So, I mean, the bigger you make your screen, the better the visibility is going to be. Okay, so I, I, I'll try to make it bigger, don't worry about it. Okay, and uh, if it is smaller, if it is in, uh, I mean, if it is uh, illegible, so just let me know hmm? during my class, just interrupt it and I'll, 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 I'll make it bigger. Okay, so uh, as you um, have already known that you, I have a website, so my website is www.iitz.ac.in slash g10. 
Okay, fine. So in this website, you will see a section called course. In course, you will see this MA662. So once you click there, once you click there, then there will be lectures, then assignments, then uh, I think your extra materials and something like past exams. Okay. And of course, there is uh, something called announcement also. Okay. So in the lecture section, in the lecture section, what you are going to see, you are going to see again I mean, two subsections. Uh, one is slide and one is video. Uh, one is video. Okay. So in this video section, what is being recorded just now? I mean, the Microsoft is going to send uh, all of us a link. You will get to see that. So, I mean, if you open the, this MSC 62 group, so then you will get to see this. But even if you uh, cannot follow that, I am going to paste the link here in, in my video section. And from there, you will be able to follow. Okay? And uh, my lectures, although in the live class, in the PowerPoint slides, I mean, they are going to be animated lectures. But uh, you are going to see them when I am going to upload it in the slide section. You are going to see them as PDF files. Okay, fine. And these assignments, these assignments, I have already uploaded the first two assignments. Uh, so, I mean, and again, the assignments I am not going to collect it back. It is up to you to do all those assignments. Okay, and these extra materials I have already uploaded. Uh, your four books, please download them as fast as possible because because of you know the copyright violation. I have to uh, remove it from there. Okay, and uh, then today I have uh, uploaded. In fact, I have added another file into that extra material section. It is uh, it is about how derivatives affect the shape of a car. So it's a very important. Uh, uh, I mean chapter for me as well as for you and it is very I mean simply explained many of the things are simply explained and in fact it's a part of this uh, undergraduate uh, undergraduate calculus course so you please go through that because uh, why I'm telling you that you get to know later on okay so past exam I mean don't worry about it for the time being and this announcement section so I'm just going to share with you this announcement and announcement sector uh, section right now. Okay, so I guess you can see this. Okay, uh, so in this announcement section, you you are going to see here the detailed syllabus. Okay, so in this detailed syllabus. Now you can see that I mean, most of the stuff that is there in the detailed syllabus, uh, probably you are already aware of them. Okay, just uh, all, all, all this stuff, this wrong scale, variational constant, power series, metallic properties of these other polynomials and basis functions. Uh, probably you have already seen this. And similarly, similarly, and th this is. The top part is uh, regarding your ordinary differential equation, and the bottom part is, uh, I mean, it is related to the partial differential equations. Okay, so here probably, I mean, you have already seen like seventy percent of all of those materials. Okay, so now what I'm going to do here, like all those stuff, like the techniques. For example, if I talk about solving an ordinary differential equation. And the techniques of solving it, you have already done it in your BSc analysis, right? What I'm going to do, I'm going to emphasize more on the theory part. What is the theory behind it? Okay? And uh, like, uh, uh, what is the theory behind it? And what is the applicability part? And uh, I will emphasize more on the physical and geometrical interpretation of all those stuff. So as you get uh, more acquainted with it, my style of teaching, uh, you will see more and more of that. Okay, fine. So, uh, I think uh, at least one of you should be uh, unmuted uh, so that 
I have a feeling that I am talking to some live audience, otherwise I mean, my room feels like a ghost room or something like that. Okay? Like, if somebody wants to ask something, so then maybe uh, you can ask the question and then the uh, remaining students, I mean, they can simply mute themselves. Is it okay? Just any, any, any of you, please unmute it because uh, otherwise it doesn't sound like a live class. Okay? Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah, I can see Sudarshana. Yeah, yeah. So maybe if somebody wants to talk later on, just uh, I mean, uh, you unmute yourself and then Sudarshana will uh, mute herself. Okay? So we are going to do it, do it this way. Uh, because you know, and again, you know, I mean, now, uh, like I say, you know, sometimes it could be seen because I was sitting there in front of my computer, and where is my, my camera is somewhere else there. Okay? So it is like I have to shift, like uh, like if I look at the camera, it is uh, it, it, it seems like I mean you realize that it is uh, exactly like talking to you eye to eye. But most of the time, probably I'll be forgetting to look into the camera. So please pardon me for that. Okay, fine. <clears throat> so here uh, you uh, probably you 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 can see uh, the syllabus part as I have told you. Here I am going to emphasize more on the theory part what is behind all those differential equations and so on okay so uh, the particular techniques i am not going to emphasize that much on the techniques okay because you have already studied them and they are readily available from many books okay and again please remember that uh, whatever materials uh, i am going to teach it is already available to you in those books okay and if there is some more extra materials you require, then I am going to provide it to you. Don't worry about the material. Okay. So, and you may be thinking that oh, Sarah has already provided us all the material. So, what is the need to attend the classes? Fine. So, what I am going to do most of the time, you will see later on that I am going to explain things. I am going to. Uh, I am not going to write everything in details because. They are already available in the books. Okay, I'm just going to explain. I'm going to give you as much explanation as possible uh, about the stuff that is already in the books. Okay, and uh, if you don't understand something, you you can just interrupt me in between, and you can email me. My email ID is already there. I mean, I have already communicated to you. I mean, maybe uh, three or four times you have it, and uh, yeah. And again, let me tell you that. Being a PhD student, I mean, it is going to be different. It is not going to be the way you used to study in your I mean, earlier courses. Here, understanding the concept is more important than getting big, big inflated marks in exam. Okay? And probably earlier, what you have done, I mean, I mean, if, if, if there is, you don't need to be ashamed of that. I also follow the same procedure when I was of your age and when I was an MSc student or PhD student. I mean, uh, emphasis was uh, emphasis was more on getting marks. I mean, you solve a lot of uh, I mean questions, lot of problems, and then I mean you feel very happy. I mean, if whatever you have practiced before it comes in the exam and you get some big fat inflated mark, okay. So in research, it is not going to be like that. You must have concepts, I mean, very clear cut concept. Otherwise, you are not going to flourish in your research. Please remember that. Okay. Here, understanding the concept is more important than, than getting marked in these compulsory courses. Okay. Fine. So, that is the way it is, it is going to be different from what you have done earlier. Okay. And uh, can you tell me whether this is your first class? This is your first online PhD class or you you have already done some uh, classes before? Yes, sir. This is our first class. This is this is your first class? Yes, sir. Okay. I'm very happy that I have been a part of your history. Fine? You are going to remember me I and mean, for the rest of your PhD life. Okay? Fine. So, and again, uh, let me come back to the uh, PDF file that I have shared. And here, uh, you can see a lot of textbook and references. And most of the stuff I have already provided to you. 
and uh, there will be some entitled lecture course and i think this one is developed by one of my own colleagues here professor rajan kumar sinha uh, and some of the stocks are really really good so uh, that will be very shared to you as well and uh, can you see the last line which one sir can you see the last line Hello. Eleven point. Yeah, in, in this way, where the cursor is, can you can you follow the cursor? The last line. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What yes, is yes, that? Yes. What is that? Trading, trading policy will be discussed in class. Exactly. Okay. So, generally, what happens here? What we do here? Uh, what we do here? The trading policy is declared. Beforehand, we have to give it to you beforehand how you are going to be traded. But now this is an extraordinary situation. This is a different situation. So uh, that is why I was thinking that I am going to have an open discussion with you how I am going to trade it. Okay, because to be frank enough, what is happening? Like say, uh, we are giving you some assignments, and then it is seen that most of the students, I mean, they talk to each other, they exchange notes. They follow the solution manuals. All this stuff is happening, so it is kind of cheating. I don't want that to happen here. So that is why I have to, I mean, uh, like say, come up with some strategy. So what I suggest that you decide among yourself. So generally, what I do, I have uh, your two two pieces. Okay, one mixem. And one ancient. Okay, so these two quizzes they have ten percent of wages. Okay, so that makes it twenty percent. And this midsem is your thirty percent wages, and this ancient is fifty percent wages. Okay, so like uh, I really want to want to have a real exam in person particularly these two because this one i can this one i can give away whatever happens this one i can give away online but these two i think in order to judge you uh, accurately these two i need to have a i mean real classroom exam so this is where i have to stretch that so that is why i have written the trading property policy it is going to be i mean discussed in class so today being the first class i am not going to discuss about it so maybe you guys i mean you discuss among yourself and then maybe you also come up with some strategy and you can let me know uh, how you want to do it and uh, maybe i i'll give you my own feedback and uh, i'll come up with something else okay so i'm keeping it for a I mean, later purpose okay so what's the time now okay so i have spent around 28 minutes fine uh why did you talk about something else okay if you have some questions i mean before i formally start the course if you, if you have some questions just uh you can ask me yeah please And while asking the question, you guys can, uh, I mean, turn on the video as well. You guys don't have any question about the course or something like that. Uh, you guys don't have any questions. You have to open up, you have to be vocal. I mean, if you don't ask me anything, then I am simply going to like uh, go like a fast train and like uh, you may be missing many of the stuff. Yes, please. No question? 
No, sir. No, everyone is fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is really, I'm, I'm happy that everybody is fine during this COVID situation. And uh, that's what we want. Uh, and just, I, I am curious to know about your connectivity. I, I guess the connectivity is fine, right? Yes, sir. Connectivity is fine, right? Okay, fine. Mm, so then maybe I will formally start. And now I am going to share this PowerPoint presentation. Okay. Yeah. So I guess. Uh, both me and the PowerPoint is visible, right? Yes, sir. Okay, okay, fine. So now you will see that, I mean, what is there? Difference equation with motivation. Okay, fine. So now, what is the differential equation? Can anybody tell me what is the, what is the differential equation? What is an equation? What is an equation? What is an equation? So it, an equation definitely, it is going to equate something, right? Fine? It is going to equate some expression with some other expression, right? Okay? So now, then what is the differential equation? I guess the handwriting is big enough for you to see. So, any equation which involves some derivative, right? Any equation which involves some derivative, okay? So, you will see the formal definition here. So, an equation containing the derivative of one or more dependent variable with respect to one or more independent variable is said to be a differential equation. So, here they are talking about your dependent and independent variables. Okay, so here, interestingly, you will see that they are talking only about one dependent variable, whereas they are kept talking about one or more here. Okay, so now you know that if I have only one dependent variable, and one independent variable. So basically, I am considering a function of a single variable, right? So then, if I find out the derivative of this function, of course, I mean, provided uh, they exist. So then, I am what I am talking about. I am talking about ordinary derivative, right? I am talking about ordinary derivative, right? But if I am considering a function of more than one variable, I am considering a function of more than one variable, so then basically whenever I am uh, talking about the derivative, I am talking about partial derivative, right? So a differential equation, if it involves ordinary derivatives, then we call it an ordinary differential equation. And if it involves partial derivative, then we call it a partial differential equation. Okay? So, uh, basically, what happens, as you can see, that in other words, a differential equation is a relationship between a finite set of functions and its derivative. Okay? So, depending upon whether the derivatives they are ordinary or partial, uh, the differential equation that uh, you are uh, going to follow, they become an ordinary differential equation or partial differential equation. Fine. So now, uh, next part is going to come is the motivation part. Okay. So now, uh, I want to tell you something that how, I mean, the thing that you are going to learn, it will be different from whatever you know already. Okay. Uh, let me talk about, like, okay. Let me talk about an equation. Okay. Uh, say something like, suppose, Capital T is the temperature, and uh, I'm talking something like something like this, where k is a constant, and uh, 
So basically, this is a function of one variable. Capital T is a function of a small variable T. And if a small variable, okay, fine. So now this is the differential equation. Okay. So now what you have learned, you know how to solve this differential equation. Okay. You know how to solve it. It's pretty straightforward. Now what you do? Separation of variables, and you do something like this, and then finally the solution comes out to be something like fine. Is it okay? Am I doing fine? Yes. 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 You believe that this is the solution. I also believe that this is the solution, right? Now, what have we done here? We have simply solved a differential equation, right? But now we are solving something like say, uh, today, if your parents ask you, oh, you are going to attend the, a class. Yes. So what is the purpose of that? You are attending a class. Okay. This is a compulsory course. I have to attend it like say from three to four. Uh, but Jitan Kalitasar is going to take this class. And so we are simply just sitting there. I mean, we are just uh, like in front of our mobile phone or desktop or laptop. That's fine. Okay. And then once the class is over, maybe we are going to have, we are going to sip a cup of tea or something like that and relax. The day is gone, it is over. Fine. That is the way life goes, right? Does it? Okay, okay, no, that shouldn't be the way. You should know why, where is this coming from? You should know where is this coming from, okay? Fine, okay, let us assume that it is coming from, in the, in the motivation part, you are just going to see that whenever we talk about differential equation, what is the utility of that? that everything that is happening in the world, it can be mathematically modeled in terms of a differential equation. Because you know that only thing that is constant in the world is change, right? Okay? Only thing that is constant in the world is change. Everything is changing, isn't it? Right now, you guys are sitting down somewhere, okay? So, I can describe. So, suppose I'm thinking about, because now it is the COVID situation, right? Everybody is, I mean, very much severe of, very much concerned about, oh my God, what is my body temperature? Okay, fine. What is your body temperature? Say, so suppose that, that is the variable capital T, fine. Okay, so then that body temperature, if I want to have a more closer look at that, always remember. Now you are sitting down somewhere in front of your laptop, desktop, or mobile phone. So that means you have a location, right? You have a location. So that means you are occupying some space, okay? And you are occupying that space at a particular time, right? So what is going to happen? That your body temperature, it is a function of some space and time. And here you can see the space I have denoted it by uh, x bar. So if I consider it as a vector quantity, I, I can write it like that. And you know, mathematicians always, uh, I mean, they have a way of making simple things complicated, right? Because we mathematicians think that we are so special that we have to show other stuff that nobody understands it. But I don't follow that. I don't act like a mathematician in many ways. So rather than that, I'm not going to do it because you are a function of space and your location can be denoted by x, y, and j coordinates. So I can define it as a function of, uh, I mean, uh, fun fun function of x, y, j, and t. And let me make it more simpler. And let us assume that in India, like this, the sea level, uh, the aptitude, it is the same everywhere. So you are not going to go above the sea level. So that means your J coordinate uh, is always going to be zero. So, or phase. So I can define yourself to be a function of X, Y, and T on. Okay, fine. So now this is the physical part. This is the physical part. We will try to interpret 
a differential equation in terms of physics and not necessarily physics, in terms of some happenings. Okay? But the thing is that that is that is fine. That is the mathematical modeling part. Okay. Now you have seen that I mean this equation I have easily solved it, right? But that is not everything. Because now as mathematicians, we need to be precise. Okay. We need to know under what circumstances, under what circumstances, this solution is valid. Okay? And those circumstances, which you will see later on, we are simply going to form them like some conditions. Like it may be initial condition, it may be boundary condition, and it may be a combination of both of them. Okay? And uh, then you have to know about all those stuff, which earlier we simply probably ignored. I'm not saying that you were ignoring it, but earlier our intention was more of getting big inflated marks in the exam. So from now onwards, we have to give up on that stuff. We have to think about understanding the concept in a much better way. Okay, fine. So now here comes the motivation part. So probably you know, I mean, Newton's law fully. Okay. Uh, if you have followed me, what we will do, I'm going to just give you uh, some hints so that you can recall. Okay? Say, uh, suppose, like uh, now you are sitting uh, in a room, okay? And suppose the, uh, I mean, Temperature, current temperature in the room is T say. Okay? And suppose there is a source in the room, like say a candlelight or something like a heat source, and suppose it has a fixed temperature Tm. Okay? So then what is going to happen? The difference or differential between this temperature is T minus Tm. Okay? So if your T is smaller than Tm. Now, what is going to happen? This, uh, like say, the surrounding temperature or the, the variable temperature, it will try to gain some temperature from it. So, there is going to be heat gain. If it is the opposite, there is going to be heat loss. So, then this Newton's law of cooling, what does it tell you that? The temperature of a body changes at a rate proportional to the difference between the temperature of the body and the temperature of the surrounding medium. Okay, so here they are talking, they are defining T as the surrounding medium and T as the temperature of the body. So if you want to mathematically express it, then what is going to happen? The rate of change with respect to time. So dt by dt, so this is proportional to this, and if you want to induce the constant of proportionality, then I can write Newton's law of cooling as it is. Is it okay with everybody? Fine. And don't worry about this, uh, don't worry about whether this is negative or positive. So, k may be greater than 0, k may be less than equal to 0. Of course, equal design we don't drop in because now, I mean, we are talking only about some constant temperature. So, this will, this will depend on, and in fact, this is thermal conductivity. This is going to depend on, I mean, whether heat is gained or lost. Okay? So, it will always be adjusted somehow. You don't need to worry about that part. So, now, uh, you have already seen probably that the solution, as you can see, it is written at the bottom, and the solution is given by 1.16. That, that equation number 1.16. Okay, fine. <clears throat> so now we are fine. We should be happy that we have found out a solution. Okay, and it's uh, like, uh, what does it tell you? What does it tell you? Can you tell me? I mean, uh, just just looking at the equation 1.16. Uh, is there any way you can tell me about the how the solution is going to behave in the long run? Of course, here, see, you will see that they have introduced another uh, constant there, it is T naught. The T naught, the T naught is nothing but the initial temperature. It is nothing but the initial temperature, okay? 
Okay. So yeah, can anybody tell me? I mean, if you look at 1.16, uh, what is going to happen in the long run? Yes. See, you have to simply look at what is going to happen while small t tends to infinity. I have given you enough hints now. Yes. Can anybody on mute and tell me what is going to happen now? No? It is pretty simple. I mean, if you plug in t tending to infinity, you can see that the second term on the right hand side, yes? Ah, it is going to vanish. Circumstances right? temperature, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so the, and the body temperature is going to assume the value of the temperature right. in the surrounding. Okay. okay, so the, exactly the same thing, exactly the same thing. I mean, if I plot here, you can see here, see? Now, this is the graphical interpretation. This is the graphical interpretation. Now, you can see that, like, they have the surrounding temperature given by Tm and at the beginning, when uh, this axis t, I mean, they say this is the time axis, and suppose this is the temperature axis. Okay, so what is happening here? This is the surrounding temperature, Tm. Okay, because you will see that throughout the whole time, you have to interpret it like this throughout the whole time range, the surrounding temperature is fixed. Okay. Then what happened? You start with some temperature here at t at t equal to zero. At t equal to zero, you start with some temperature here. Now, if you plot the graph of the solution, what it is saying that whether you start with a small temperature or whether you start with a bigger temperature initially, what is going to happen? Eventually, everything is going to approach the value of the surrounding temperature. Is it okay? Yes, Fine. So, see, whenever you study something about differential equation or for that matter, anything, and uh, this is more for particularly for the applied mathematician, I'm telling you, you should always try to interpret it physically, what is going to happen there. So, this, this is the physical interpretation of Newton's law of cooling. Okay. So, now, I am some funny part. What's this? Can you see what, what, what is this? What, what does the picture tell you? Mm -hmm. What is this picture about? Uh, it's a picture of a person I've been looking at a magnifying glass and he's kind of running wearing a hat. I mean, you must have seen a lot of TV series like what crime patrol or something like that. So this is nothing but a detective. Okay, so let me move over to the next slide. What is that? This is really scary. Mm -hmm. Yes, please read it. I'm giving you like one minute or so. Fine. <clears throat> okay, so this is the famous dead body problem. In fact, uh, in like say in US, uh, many of the colleges, I mean, they try to motivate the students through this particular example. And they create, I mean, different kind of situation. I mean, with the same thing. I mean, it's called the dead body. And like, say, they have described it like a dead body was found in the refrigerator of a hotel. And the room where the refrigerator was kept, uh, it, it had a constant temperature, like uh, some degree cent centigrade and the temperature of the freeze they are going to give you, right? And then you have to find out the exact timing of the, uh, of, of the date, okay? 
And here, what they are going to do, they are going to simply apply Newton's law of cooling. You may be thinking that it's going to be extremely difficult to I mean, solve it, but it is not so. Okay, and in fact, in many of the projects I mean that have been given to the undergraduate students in the US, they uh, describe the detective as a lady whose name is Daphne. So Daphne, it has come from the word differential equation, if you ask me. Okay, fine. See, this is just a motivation part. This is just to let him know that these differential equations that uh, you have uh, been following or you have solved, right? They, they have some background. It doesn't I mean, fall down from the sky all of a sudden. Okay, all of them. In fact, some of them, they are, I mean, constructed. Okay, but most of them, they have physical meanings. Okay. And uh, this is also, in fact, we are going to deal with this later on, later on when uh, we are going to study an autonomous system, uh, all the stability, uh, and the dynamical system when we are going to talk about, then uh, these, all these things are going to come. Like say how in mathematical model uh, population dynamics. Uh, and uh, then, of course, I mean, uh, that uh, the decay, how something decays at some particular rate. Okay, so all this stuff we are going to do. So, this also I don't want to spend uh, more time. So now let us try to recall something. Okay. So now this is uh, more of a formal definition of differential equations. So this, I mean, this has already been done in the very first slide. So now uh, you are going to classify differential equation according to some criteria. Okay. So now classification by type, as I have told you, that what is an ordinary differential equation and what is a partial differential equation. You can easily follow this. So I don't want to spend much time on this. You know that an equation if it contains some ordinary derivatives of one or more uh, dependent variable, and again with respect to only one independent variable. So that is called an ordinary differential equation. And uh, let me tell you, and similarly for partial differential uh, equation, it involves partial derivative of one dependent variable with respect to more than one independent variable. Okay, so now one thing I want to tell you is that, like say, the differential equations that uh, is uh, being considered, they don't necessarily have to involve only one dependent variable. Remember that. Okay, it may involve more than one dependent variable, but somehow they are related, they are interrelated. Okay, so in that case, they are going to form a couple system of equations. So oh, all these things we are going to see later on. So this is about ordinary and partial differential equations, and uh, then classification by order. Okay, I mean higher order differential equations and linear differential equations and all this stuff. So I'll go quickly. So uh, can can you tell me? I mean, what is the order? What is the order and uh, degree of a differential equation? Okay. Anyway, most of you have muted it. Okay, so anyway, if you look at the differential equation that uh, you see in the slide, then you will see that it involves two derivatives. Okay, so one is second order derivative, and the other one is the first order derivative. Okay, fine. So then you can see, as I have told you, this is of order two. And uh, what about this? It, does it have degree three? Is this equation differential equation means of degree three? Okay. Anyway, you are yes. Yes, somebody's no. 
Yes, if no. you know, yes, tell me. First order, first degree. Yes. Second order. First degree. Second order, first degree. First degree. Second order, first degree. First okay. degree. Degree yes. is yes. the power of five. Sorry. Exactly. See, I am very good at confusing. Remember, I hope I have a live class. I mean, I am having a live class. I, I I hope I have an actual classroom class. Uh, okay. So let let me tell you. I mean, see, whenever we look at on or whenever we try to uh, extract the order and degree of a differential equation, the first thing we have to see is the highest order derivative. Okay. Fine. So then the order of the differential equation is the order of the highest order derivative. Okay. And the degree of the differential equation is nothing but the power or the exponent of the highest order derivative. Okay. Fine. For example, like I I may have, I may have something like, I may have something like say uh d2y dx2 plus 3 dy dx to the power 100 equal to something like say e to the power x sin x something like that okay so here what i have to look into i have to look into the highest order derivative here okay which is 2 here second order derivative and what is its power it is 1 irrespective of whatever power the lower order derivatives are going to have it is not going to affect the degree of the differential equation okay so if had it been something like this still the degree of this differential equation would have been three okay and the order is two order is nothing but the order of the highest order derivative. is it okay fine now <clears throat> uh there are ways of writing differential equation. Uh, okay. Now uh, look, look at uh, the given differential equation. So obviously, this given differential equation it involves it involves over there. It involves the second order derivatives. Okay. The first order derivative, fine, and uh, of course, the dependent variable itself, okay, and then on your right hand side, it is some function of, it is, it is again some function of the independent variable x, okay, so that means, that means, as I know, and this one, I, I can simply write it as y double prime, and please, I mean, now you are PhD student, please don't, I mean, pronounce that as y double des or don't pronounce it as y des no that is wrong it is called prime that slanted slash sign it stands for prime so this is y double prime this is y prime okay fine so now you can see that taking all of this together what i can do I can simply express the differential equation as a function of x, y, y prime, and y double prime. So I can implicitly write it as three source. Okay. So now here I was talking about a second order differential equation. Okay. So now if I talk about an nth order differential equation, so in a similar way, I would express this. Of course, I'm talking about ODE for the time, not PD. Okay? Here x is the independent variable, y is the independent variable. So I could go like y n minus one, y n. So this is equal to zero. Okay? So like as I have told you, something like this. And then the same thing probably, I mean, you can express it like this, that this is an NS order differential equation. So this may be, you can express it as a function of this. Is it okay? Fine. And 
Again, one thing here. Now, uh, here, if you look at the slides, if you look at the slides, uh, they are talking about f is a real valued continuous function. Okay? They are talking about a continuous function. Okay? Of course, I mean, uh, <coughs> In order to be differentiable, it has to be continuous, but not the, I mean, vice versa, that you want to be known. Now, later on, why I am telling uh, you, I mean, why I am emphasizing more on this continuous function, because later on, we are going to talk about something like continuous interval or domain. So, this is going to be very important. So, fine. Okay? <clears throat> Yeah, and then uh, we can talk about the classification by linearity, okay? And uh, you already know that, I mean, what is linear? Like, uh, whenever we talk about a differential equation, we talk about uh, derivatives of different orders, and it comes with the coefficients of those derivatives, right? Okay, so now, <clears throat> if the derivatives appear linearly, along with their coefficients being only a function of the independent variable, then we say that the differential equation is linear. Okay, fine? As you can see from here. So, an NH order of linear differential equation, like say earlier one, like here in the blackboard you can see, if I call it 4, it is said to be linear, right? If <coughs> This one is linear in all the dependent variables and their derivatives. Okay, so this means that an nth order will be linear when you can write it in that form as written in uh, like written over six, or you can write in the form exactly in the form six. Now, if you look at the form six. You can see that the coefficients of all the derivatives, the coefficients of all the derivatives, they are simply functions of x, and they are a post function of x, that is the independent variable, or constants, and all those derivatives themselves, they appear only linearly. Okay, so their powers are simply one. Okay, and uh, if a differential equation violates these conditions that we are talking about, then it becomes a nonlinear equation. Okay. So these are the I mean classification criteria. So you can see uh, in the highlighted uh, portion. So this I have already explained to you. And uh, again, as I have told you, a nonlinear differential equation is what which is simply not linear, that's it, okay? Right. And uh, let us see what brings a nonlinear to the uh, differential equation that you are going to see next. Yeah, so can you tell me what brings nonlinearity to these differential equations? The first one, You have already been given uh, in the first one there is a product e y to y prime. Ah. Ah. Yeah, see, so simply you can say that the uh, coefficient of coefficient of y prime it involves the dependent variable itself. Yes. It involves dependent variable itself. Okay. Yes. That is why it is not linear. And in the second case, I will even see that sine y that itself is a nonlinear function of the dependent variable. So, like that, that is where the nonlinear becomes okay. So, the blue color has given you an idea of So, this is. 
Okay, okay. So I think I'm going to stop here this because I need to talk about something more. So okay, fine. Yeah. So uh, let me ask you, like, uh, whatever time. Yes, whatever time I think we have spent here in the class, I think my voice is kind of recording. Can, can it be muted? Like, can everybody mute it? Yeah, thank you. So now, if I ask you questions, and then uh, you can let me know, or you can raise your hand there so that. I can, I can uh, come to you guys. Okay, so just let me know whether, because see, uh, today's class, in fact, it was a kind of an experiment. I mean, I don't want to talk about the, the academic portion of this, but I want to talk about now the technical part of our lecture. So whether uh, it is going to work in that way or not, is it okay with you? Like so far, so good. And uh, if you have any suggestions, okay. So how to improve the technical portion, technical presentation of these kind of lectures, so please let me know. Okay, and uh, you see, uh, you have, I mean, uh, three classes and one tutorial. Okay, uh, what I ideally want that uh, I want to have, like say, instead of one hour lecture, I want to have one hour, 15 minute lecture. But I guess uh, that, is not going to be possible because you have another class from uh, four o'clock, right? Um, yes, you have got another class from four o'clock. Yes, sir. Right? Okay. Uh, so, what? Uh, because, say, you have one class for tutorial. Hmm. So, generally, I don't spend I mean, extra time in tutorial. Rather, what I do. I do those examples in the class itself. Uh, I like it that way. But uh, it seems that because, see, uh, you have class on Saturday also. And uh, Monday, uh, I think your tutorial starts from uh, 8 o'clock. Oh, whether that time is okay with you or not, that I don't know. Like, I uh, ideally, I would like to spend, I mean, 15 minutes more uh, in a class. So, is it possible to have class starting at 2.45 or something like that? Do, do you have class from 2 to 3? Yes? Yes, sir. Or you have classes from 2 to 3 as well? Yes, sir. And morning, morning, like say, I am looking for some slot which I can do continuously for one hour and 15 minutes. Is it possible? Sir, so in morning we have uh, lectures of electives on. Lecture from what time? Uh, so for modular form, it's 9 to 10 for Thursday and Friday. Uh -huh. And 10 to 11 on Monday. 10 to 11 on Monday. So, uh, is it basically, I mean, all of you don't have class from 12? So, sir? You, you guys don't have any class from 12? No, sir. Okay. We, I don't have any class. Uh, others? Sir. Others? Uh, apart from Sudakshana, can somebody come up and tell me whether they have classes from 12? Uh, sir, uh, we also, I also have no classes from 12 to 12.55. But from one, you guys have class? No, no, I have no class in that time. Okay, so that is why, uh, just I will send you all a mail so for the time being, let us stick to this schedule okay obviously my next class is going to be on saturday don't worry about it okay uh, now 
what I would like to do, I want to have my continuous classes. Maybe I will shift my classes from uh, this three to four slot to 12 to, I mean, uh, 115. Okay. So then, I mean, in three days, it will be over. Of course, I mean, apart from the Saturday schedule. Saturday schedule, I mean, uh, that is fine. Okay. So I'll, 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 I'll send you a mail and uh, yeah, next, uh, uh, I mean, next Saturday, I mean, maybe we can talk about it again. Okay. Mm -hmm. Fine. So, okay then, I mean, uh, I'm very happy to be a part of this history uh, because I mean, this is a completely new thing for me as well. And I hope, I mean, that doesn't become the norm. I mean, definitely happy days are going to be coming back. You guys, I mean, please stay positive. Okay. We are definitely going to welcome you all back to our beautiful campus and we will have like actual, I mean, uh, classroom classes. Okay. So it, it is going to be more comfortable. But uh, wherever you are, I mean, stay safe, healthy, and uh, take care. So I'll meet you on uh, Saturday. Okay? Bye.